Hey Eurovision fans, Ali Alexander will represent the UK in Eurovision 2024 in Malmö, Sweden. I'm going to tell you a bit about his background, what we know so far about the song, check out a live performance he did with Elton John, talk about how this announcement affects other countries in Eurovision and finally talk about how this could do in Eurovision 2024. So let's keep going. If you're new here, welcome, my name is Tom. I'm an Irish Eurovision analyst and you can find all of this stuff on my Eurovision channel. So I actually already covered this potential announcement before. There were rumors going around that Ali might be representing. I covered it in one of my previous news episodes. So we did have an inkling that this could happen, but actually seeing it announced in reality is kind of crazy. And also the way it was announced as well on BBC One, prime time television on Strictly Come Dancing. So if you don't know Strictly Come Dancing, it is one of the biggest if not the biggest TV show that's on around Christmas time. It's a dancing elimination contest with like celebrities in it. Literally everybody I know watches it. I don't watch it, but everybody else I know watches it. So it's a big, big deal. And this is the slot that they decided for Ollie to announce that he was gonna be representing really, really early. But usually we get the UK announcements pretty much as late as possible. And this year it's super early. We're getting it in December. I wonder is part of that because of those leaks and people were starting to ask questions and Ali was getting bored of lying about it. Maybe he was just like, let's go for it. Yeah, but this announcement on the biggest show in the UK really just shows this gigantic shift. You know, last year we saw that the semi-finals were shown on BBC One, which was huge news, just showing that the BBC are prioritizing the show more. The viewing figures for Eurovision in the UK are gigantic. They're actually the biggest out of any country. Obviously, UK has a big population, but compared to the other big five, the UK viewing numbers are gigantic. So there's a huge fan base for Eurovision. So I'll quickly just reiterate the background information about him that I gave in that news episode. Ali Alexander was the frontman of a band called Years and Years, which was a three-piece synth pop electronic group from the UK. Two of the members left, so he actually ended up that he was left on his own as Years and Years. And he actually announced yesterday that he's going under his own name now. And we know that he applied in 2022 to represent the UK, but he lost out to Sam Ryder because he was working with Polydor Music. So we knew that he was keen in the past, but it just didn't work out because of the situation he was in. And he is a number one selling album artist in the UK. So his last album, which was called Night Call, went to number one in 2022. And we've had number one selling artists represent the UK before, Bonnie Tyler, Engelbert Humperdinck, but their number one albums were a long time ago. So Bonnie Tyler's was in 83, and Engelbert Humperdinck's was in 74. So they were very much artists who had their number ones a long time ago and more in the kind of end stages of their career. So not really at their peak. Ali had his number one album in the last two years. So he's really at the top of his fame right now. And this is what is so different about this announcement compared to previous big acts who kind of were at different parts of their career than Ali is. So let's check out some of the interview that he did with the BBC. So this is done with Mark Savage, the music correspondent for the BBC, who you may know got in a bit of trouble last year with his scathing review of all the songs, saying that Joker writes suck, stuff like that, which caused a lot of drama. I think he's changed his tone since then. And he spoke to Ali just moments before the announcement was made on Strictly Come Dancing. So here's a couple of quotes. So Ali told him that he's known about this for two months. So that means he would have gotten the news in October. We saw previously that the UK released a statement saying they'd done their search over the summer. So they must have talked to him, worked it out, said, okay, Ali, can you start like come up with some of my ideas for songs? And then maybe Ali sent them a couple of demos and they said, okay, yeah, definitely. We've got something good here. They gave him confirmation in October. Ali talks about it being a massive Eurovision fan, having this thing of watching it with his family, which is a huge thing in the UK of Ireland, is watching it with your family when you're growing up, having like a pizza, becoming like an annual social event. I like this question when he was asked about costumes. So you must be looking at books and books of costume ideas. And Ali says, oh, for sure. It's fun just imagining what you could do on stage, but it has to be achievable in a short amount of time because there's such a quick turnaround. So he knows his stuff. I think he's actually probably been to one of the live shows and he knows that you have to come on and off the stage. So he's already thinking about the different elements of his staging. He's a real proper fan. This is not someone who's doing this because they're looking for a career boost. Like obviously that's one of the benefits, but he's doing this because he's a super fan. So I'm obligated to stand a super fan. So Mark brings up these work with Lady Gaga before and would he think about wearing the meat dress? And he replies that he can't because he's a vegetarian. But yes, it needs to be a wow moment. Maybe there could be multiple outfits, three minutes, 
three costumes. I'm sorry, I'm gonna start drooling. I need to get a napkin because this is just music. This guy really knows what he's doing. I definitely want three costumes, please. Reveal, reveal. Take off his hat. There's something underneath a bird cage with a bird in it or something, who knows. So Mark asks, I know you haven't revealed the song yet, but is there anything that you can tell us? And he says, I wrote the song with Danny Harl and it'll be coming next year. It's really good. Okay, so that's good. <laughs> I'm glad that he's saying it's a really good song. That's a good start as well. Danny Harl, in case you don't know, is a real up and coming producer in the UK who recently just worked with Dua Lipa on her single Houdini, which is the lead single, single for her next album. He's also worked with Liam Gallagher, Charlie XCX and Rina Sawayama, who we aren't gonna get any rumors about this year. <laughs> what are British Euro fans gonna talk about from January to March without any Rina rumors? <laughs> What's Rina gonna do for her career without being able to tease people about rumors about her going to Eurovision? So Mark asks, is this going to be really cutting edge forward thinking pop? And Ali replies, that's definitely the vibe. It's gonna be electronic, something you can dance to. But yeah, I can't say more than that. You don't need to say any more. I'm more, <laughs> I'm already gonna to have to change my knickers. I like that he's not going for a ballad. I think if you do go into a ballad, you have to be exceptional vocally. Well, not exceptional, but there's definitely more room to show off your vocal capabilities with a big belting ballad as opposed to like an electronic dance bop. I think we're getting something upbeat, fun, bop, dancey. Who doesn't like that? So Je m'appelle Percy on Twitter, who works with Wii Blogs, started Easter egg hunting in the announcement clip that he did. So I'm gonna put the two images up here and you can do a bit of spot the difference yourself. Uh, but she circled the clock, but actually the clock is the same time in both images. You can see the telephone on the telephone box has been changed to night call. So some people were thinking that that was a reference to the name of the song. But as I've already mentioned earlier in this video, that was the name of his last album, which went to number one. We can also see that the bus has been changed to the number 26 which could be a reference to 26 songs in the final and then we've also got this speed sign being put in that says 25 now I'm not sure what that's a reference to is it that um, maybe that's the release date is it going to be the 5th of February is it going to be the 21st of January or uh, 25th of February I'm not sure and then we can also see that there's stickers all over the phone box it looks like a sleepy emoji and then we've got another 26 that's our second 26 and then we've also got la maybe that could be the initials of the song like l a love anonymous or something like that who knows but yeah the most curious ones there for me are that 25 and the la so that's i love these easter eggs it's so fun this new british delegation is amazing like they're just so in touch with the community so now we're going to check out his performance with elton john at the brit awards in 2021 so i wanted to pick it. a lot of people have been saying that he's not very good singing live so i wanted to to specifically choose a live performance video so I could check that out. We'll also get a feel for his musicality as well. Just the fact that he's performing with Elton John shows he's pretty established in the UK. I'll keep as much of the visuals and audio as possible as always, but I may have to distort it a little bit. It's a sin when I know my secret bang. Oh, his vocals are fine. <laughs> his vocals sound absolutely fine. I don't want people to talk about. I like his vocals. It's not perfect. He's not like a big Alika Belter, but oh, I think he's got a lovely voice. Oh, he's very dramatic as well, isn't he? Great control of his body. Really cool androgyny. I actually kind of like him send this song. <laughs> He's got a really commanding presence. He's totally in the moment. He's got great connection. Elton looks great as well, doesn't he? Oh yes, into the electronic dance pop. Yes, please. He's got a great uh, stomach. He's definitely been toning. Ooh, I would love if he did the Sea Vision where he did the ballad into a dancey bop. I love this maze motif, that's gorgeous. Like a hedge maze on the ground on the thing. Really strong visuals. And Ali, Ali's just serving absolute C at the front there. Yeah, he's just a good performer. He's, you can see he's got no inhibitions on the stage, he's very confident. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like a homage to Queen. Yeah, he's got real great theatrics. He's going to bring such an entertaining show. 
Yeah, and they're singing live. Yeah, there's no lip syncing going on here because Elton signs live as well. Vocals are fine. What are people talking about? Maybe his live vocals in smaller venues aren't as good, but this is like top performance level, which Eurovision will have as well. Yeah, gorgeous. Damn, I love this maze motif color. It's so gorgeous. Really mysterious puzzle vibe. Oh, and confetti as well. <laughs> I'm just saying, is he dancing on the stage? Yeah, God. He's got levels as well, working up and down. Wow, he's really exciting. And you see he's got budget as well now. He's gonna have budget for dancers and costumes and people to come up with ideas for him as well. Musically, I love it. This is a great song. Really fun, electronic song. Oh, he's really, really, really good. This is like really high quality performer. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, this is really exciting for the UK. Oh, 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 that's saucy. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I'm not as much of a fan of that saucy bit, but still, they can edit. I don't think Elton knows the words, he's reading off a script. Mmm, yeah, I love him when he gets into the choir bits. I hope there's some quiet element in this song, even if it's just like a small bit at the start or a small bit at the end, because I think his voice is definitely strong enough to carry that. Yeah, really, really, really impressive. I thought that was really great. And those, that was four and a half minutes, I think, and it flew by. Yeah, this is really exciting. He is such a high quality performer there. And he's got a, such a cool look and a cool vibe and he pulls it off because he carries it with his confidence and his ability to perform. He was all over the place, slow movement, kind of seductive leaning towards Elton when he was getting down low. He's just like making incredible shapes with his body and adding in those like extra elements to the performance that just elevates it. That like special stuff that makes something that could be kind of medium into something really, really, really wow. Yeah, this is really, really, really great for the UK. This is the biggest person they've sent ever. Is it ever? Yeah, I think it is. Like Blue were pretty big as well, but again, towards the sunset period of their career, Bonnie Tyler, Ellen Gilbert the same. This is the biggest act that the UK has sent since I don't know, all the way back into the 70s with maybe Cliff Richard or something. Definitely within the last 30 years. This is really, really, really great and it's so exciting. And I, th the fact that he's so passionate about the contest, he's not gonna wanna go there and do badly. He's gonna wanna succeed. He's gonna wanna 12 points. Let's be real, any Euro fan who goes to Eurovision, they dream about getting a 12 points. That's the big thing. And so he's definitely gonna be rooting for that. He's gonna be bringing theatrics, color, entertainment to the show. He's been watching it, so he's gonna be picking up ideas from Chanel, from Hadro Monsigra, from all these really iconic acts of the last couple of years who've just blown the stage apart. He's gonna be taking the best of that, giving it his own little Ollie twist and then putting it onto the stage. So he's gonna come with something big, I just know. It's safe to say now that the UK really is going through their renaissance. That uh, 2021 final where Germany, Spain and UK and Netherlands as well all got zero points. I think that was just the biggest wake up call because it was zero from the jury, zero from the televote. And I think that was just maybe the final straw. Suddenly the BBC were like, okay, wait, we really suck big time. And since then they've made changes. They had Sam Ryder who came second, fifth place in Junior Eurovision in 2022. Then Mae Muller who, although didn't get a great result, had a fantastic song, really, really great performance. It was just her vocals that kind of let her down. So just that kind of decision-making on what song to pick was a small error. But I feel like this delegation is learning and improving with each time they go anyway. Being able to work in Junior and Alec Eurovision gives them double experience. And then Junior Eurovision this year, they came fourth. And now they've got Ali Alexander. So I've got so much faith in this delegation now. And I know that there was that mistake last year with May Muller's song, picking something that she wasn't really able to sing with that choreography. I thought everything else looked great, by the way. I love the visuals. I love the dancers. I thought everything else was pretty great. And the song was great as well. It was just that vocal that let her down. And pretty much everyone else in the final sounded great. There were very few people who had any vocal blips. You know, in the past, I've always talked about the Netherlands being the poster boy for turning your fortunes around in Eurovision, having those eight non-qualifications and then going to being like powerhouses in Eurovision, including a win. The difference with that was when the Dutch failed, they would fail in the semi-final, so it wasn't as, as visible. 
the UK failures have been really public because they've always been in the grand final. So this turnaround is so much more visible because of that, because instead of seeing the UK coming last all the time, we're probably gonna move to the UK being pretty good. I think if the UK gets a good result this year, which I'm kind of expecting, then I think that's gonna spur on more people, more people applying to represent the UK. I think it's a real turnaround. It could all theoretically go the wrong way as well. This could flop and then we could go into another dark age with the UK. But the fact it's so early, he has so much time. He knows the competition really, really well. He's got a great producer. He's a fantastic performer. He can sing, he's got visuals. It, it doesn't really sound like something that's bottom five at all. The, these aren't the ingredients of a bottom five entry. Plus the mistake with the vocals last year, the delegation will be saying to him, are you sure you can sing this song? Please pick a song that's in your vocal range. Every artist will have a vocal range that they're the most comfortable in. So you can just create the song to sit into that vocal range and then you've got no problem. I felt like May Muller last year was maybe a little bit last minute. It felt like the whole thing was quite late. This is super early. They searched in the summer. They told him in October. They've announced it in December. Th there's no gonna be last minute panic stuff here. This is all really well organized. My point is this is gonna be really great for the competition. Having the UK have this transformation so visible is gonna be really good for other countries who are having troubles right now. Georgia, Latvia, Ireland. I already spoke in my last news video about how a good result for the UK will be the biggest shakeup for Ireland. I don't know what it will take for the Irish public to turn on RTE and put pressure on them to finally like start caring. The biggest single problem with Ireland is that RTE don't care and they have no pressure. They need the pressure from the public. Ollie doing really well. The Irish public will hopefully start asking, why aren't we sending someone really great like CMAT who wants to go? Why aren't we facilitating that? Why are RTE not? doing every single thing possible to make her feel comfortable that she wants to go. I also think this could be great for Germany. That photo I showed you earlier with Spain, UK and Germany all getting zero points. UK have turned things around. Spain have really turned things around with Benidorm Fest being amazing. What are Germany doing? Germany have less and less excuses now. Spain are doing great. UK are doing great now. France are top 10 in the, in the rankings in the last 10 years. You know about Italy. They're contenders to win every single year. Germany is the only big five country left now who is not delivering. There's, there's no excuses anymore. All the other big fives are delivering. They can talk about neighbors and borders. Germany has nine countries bordering it. That is like probably the most in Europe. I don't know, is there any country who has more? Maybe Switzerland, but they have nine neighboring countries so they can't use the neighbor vote excuse <laughs> they've got the most neighbors you could possibly have so no more excuses from germany this is just good for everybody including the uk so how do i think this will do in your vision well first of all let's go take a look at the odds and the uk have moved from 14 up to fifth so there is hype for this and justifiably so a couple of the bookmakers the uk is now favorite so s markets and betfair exchange the uk is now currently favored to win now obviously we only have two songs right now so very limited information but still if you ask me would i rather be favored to win now or not i would say yeah i'd prefer to be favored to win now even though there's only two songs i still think that's a pretty nice place to be in it's good that there's hype and excitement because that's based off the quality of the artist and the quality of the producer and the fact that this British delegation's on a good run, they're making good staging decisions. So it's, there's a basis for them to be number one. Yeah, like I'm looking at this now and pretty much there's only one market that has them down low. I think it hasn't updated yet. Pretty much everybody else has the UK first or second in the odd. Really, really exciting. How do I think this will do? Again, I don't know what the rest of the songs are, but I don't think Ollie's gonna come. He, I don't think he's risking his career, but he is taking a bit of a gamble here. He's quite established, he's got a big name, he's represented the country, he's announced it in a big way. He's not gonna wanna fail anyway because he wants to su succeed in something that he loves so much. Same with me, if I went to Eurovision, I wouldn't wanna come 25th. I'd be happy I went, but I'd wanna come like, I want to be on the left side of the scoreboard. And I think that he's going to work really hard to do that. And he's going to work his connections, work with the choreographers he knows, the stylists he knows. I think he's just going to give us high quality thought out everything. So I'm really expecting this to be top 10 at this point. Who knows if the song is amazing, this could be top five, it can be even higher. This can potentially win. 
but it's so early to say that. But yeah, this is the type of person who can win Eurovision. And this is good for the, the conversation about Big Five, people who don't like the Big Five because they think it's unfair. We need them financially, end of story. But it's definitely better when the Big Five does well because it kind of stops people complaining about the unfairness of it. In any case, that is all the stuff I think about Ali Alexander representing the UK in Eurovision 2024. What do you think? Did you notice any other Easter eggs in those two photos I showed you earlier? Thank you so much to Pal for supporting me on Buy Me a Coffee and also to Jacqueline Stanton for supporting me on PayPal. If you want to support the channel, I'll leave links to you in the description. And of course, thank you to all my patrons from all over the world for patronizing me. I have a lot of British patrons, so I hope that they're all extremely excited about this announcement. So that's it for today. I hope to see you in another Eurovision analysis video very soon. Goodbye. Blah, 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 blah.